All right, we are live. Welcome everyone to the Manga to be YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about some really cool stuff and announcing something really cool today about our Manga to be for VS Code extension. So let's give everyone a minute to join. While everyone is joining, let me know in the chat what is your favorite VS Code extension. Let's see what what everyone prefers. And what we're going to do today is talk about the MongoDB VS Code extension. We're going to uh, show some code examples, a little demo, and have, hopefully have a chat with the audience. So if you have any questions, uh, you'll let us know. And we have a special guest today. We have uh, Max Marcon. He is the product management lead for developer experience and developer tools at MongoDB. So welcome, Max. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you for having, having me here. Uh, hello, everybody. Awesome. All right. Let us know uh, in the chat. Let's see. Let's see. People are saying hi. Let us know what, what, what is your favorite VS Code extension? Have you ever used the MongoDB for VS Code extension? Um, hi, uh, Swati Maruda. I am terrible with names, so per <laughs> please forgive me. Um, well, let's let's go ahead and go over to some some icebreaker questions. I like I like asking these um, very uh, you know nothing controversial questions of you know or anything like that. Just some icebreakers, like for instance, tabs or spaces. Max, do you prefer tabs or spaces? I definitely prefer spaces. Spaces. Okay. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Semicolons or no semicolons? semicolons okay all right good windows mac or linux mac mac okay so well then the next question android or iphone i'm gonna assume iphone yes okay <laughs> all right all right last one coffee or tea coffee i'm italian coffee. definitely coffee oh awesome all right those are those are all the ways that i would have answered well except for the you know what i'm still stuck on android i i love i love android and i just can't bring myself to go back to the iphone i don't know why I used to be an Android developer back in the days, and uh, I used to have an Android phone. And then at some point, I stopped being an Android developer and I switched to iOS. Uh, <laughs> the At least back then, the iPhone was much more stable than Android. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's still the case today, but uh, uh, I'm still an iPhone user. Yeah, yeah. So you switched to iPhone and you never looked back. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right, just looking at some comments here. Uh, is this for beginners? Yes, for sure. This is for beginners. We're going to be talking about the MongoDB for VS Code extension. And we're going to uh, go through some demos. We're going to talk about uh, how the extension came about. And there's tons of comments coming through. Let me just make sure. Uh, da -da. Yep. Okay, cool. So let's go into some of these questions then. Let's see. Uh, da -da. So where... Max, where, where did the, the extension come from? Like, what, what's the origin story of the MongoDB for VS Code extension? Right. So back in, I think, 2019, uh, when I used to be the product manager for Compass, we were consistently seeing that developers uh, kept Compass, the shell, and their favorite code editor open at the same time. And so they had a lot of context switching going on uh, on their screen, which is always uh, uh, a waste of time. There are people who like it, but uh, mostly you want to have uh, as much as possible of your tools in the same window. And uh, so we asked ourselves, like, what if we could bring uh, most of the tools that developers need when they work with MongoDB in the place where developers are, which is typically the ID. And, and already back then, VS Code was extremely popular. I think uh, based on Stack Overflow survey was like 50% of the developer population was using VS Code. And we were seeing that it was growing tremendously year over year. And so we decided that uh, uh, it made sense to probably make a MongoDB experience for, experience for VS Code. And uh, it's also worth saying that the majority of our developer population back then and probably also today was made of JavaScript developers and JavaScript developers are typically in VS Code. So with all this information at hand, it was pretty easy to say, okay, let's build something for VS Code. And uh, um, 
that is what we still try to do today. So be where developers are. And VS Code is one of the places where a lot of developers are. Nice, nice. And so that kind of answers the, the next question that I had was like, what was the, the primary goal? And that's, you know, to help developers like less context switching, just be more productive and, and anything else to add to that? Yeah, so I think uh, when we started thinking about the extension, we started with a very broad goal in mind. We were like, give, let's give developers the essential tools they need to work with MongoDB with an experience that feels natural to them and natural for someone who spends a lot of time in VS Code. And with this very broad uh, idea, we just started talking to developers. We interviewed a lot of users, a lot of customers to understand what this meant to them. Mm -hmm. And so from there, we narrowed it down to like a few things. So we wanted to provide a simple data exploration experience that was well integrated into the VS Code UX which means uh, a place where they could look at databases, collections, opening and edited documents, uh, and everything with uh, the VS Code experience in mind. So mm -hmm. command palette, uh, uh, shortcuts, uh, anything that uh, helps you work with MongoDB without leaving your keyboard. And then we also learned that uh, visibility over schema and indexes is something that is fundamental when you write queries, no matter if you're writing them in JavaScript or in Rust or in Golang, you still want to know what your documents look like. Mm -hmm. And so that was the second idea that we kind of incorporated into the first uh, MVP. And then we wanted to give developers an environment where prototyping queries and aggregations would be uh, extremely easy with quick feedback uh, and also with an autocomplete that would allow them to very quickly type queries and aggregations. As, as you know, queries and aggregations in MongoDB mean type in JSON. And uh, that's easy when your query is uh, sweet and short, but it becomes uh, a bit tedious when you have a very complex aggregation. Aggregations are very powerful, no, don't get me wrong, but there is a lot of typing involved. And so if we could help uh, people type aggregations by providing uh, autocomplete uh, and shortcuts, then uh, we could make the developer cycle much more effective. Yeah. And so that's yeah. essentially what we were trying to do when we first released uh, uh, MongoDB for VS Code back in, I think, 2020. Yeah. So um, this, uh, I'm sorry, Hatit uh, wants to know um, more about Aggregate on LinkedIn. So yes, for sure. Hopefully we'll, we'll show a little bit more uh, code examples. Maybe we'll have some aggregations in our examples uh, possibly in a bit. Um, and then I also wanted to also show so this comment from LinkedIn from Chris um, is this session being recorded is at work right now uh, for, for sure. The session is going to be immediately available on YouTube uh, right after. So you can watch it on demand later. Awesome. So that's amazing. So basically helping developers to become more efficient and effective and write the code quicker. Uh, that is that is the goal. And so the next question was um, the the extension provides uh, like we talked about, like the streamlined workflow. And so how does this impact uh, you know, developers productivity and collaboration? Like how does this impact a developer? Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I share my screen? So as I yeah, talk, yeah. I can also uh, point at things on the screen. For sure. Cool. For sure. So I think uh, everybody is seeing my VS code right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the leaf here means that uh, the MongoDB for VS Code extension is installed. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll show you around while I talk. So the first thing was uh, less context switching. So as you see here in my IDE, I have uh, actually a small Node.js application open. And this is my, the code I'm working with. But at the same time, like here on the left, I am connected to the MongoDB cluster that this application relies on. And uh, uh, I can look at databases, I can look at collections and everything is a bit boring here because right now this is a completely uh, pristine cluster that they just started uh, uh, fresh before uh, doing this live stream. But uh, um, it's actually easy to put the data in and uh, again, without leaving VS Code uh, at all. And uh, the way I'm gonna do that, and we can talk about maybe uh, playgrounds a bit later, in detail, but uh, just to show you that uh, together with my application code, I also have uh, 
a dump of data that I'm going to use to seed my cluster. And so one click away or one short keyboard shortcut away, this is going to go through that zip file and zip it, uh, put it inside my cluster. Uh, so I have more interesting data to use for my demo right now. It's going to take maybe half a minute or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, while that works, uh, we can probably see that the data is being generated. Yeah, so you see that this quotes DB has been created and uh, it has a quotes collection. And uh, this provides uh, uh, visibility over how many documents I have in the collection. So how much data am I working with? Uh, I can also look at uh, uh, an example document. And this is all part of VS Code experiences, no different than looking at uh, uh, code. I can even like, edit this document in the same way that I added code and I saved it uh, again without leaving my ID. And uh, uh, the other thing that uh, is very interesting is visibility over schema and indexes. So you can see here that uh, uh, in the schema uh, subtree, I see that there is an underscore ID like every good MongoDB document, uh, an author, a category, popularity, the quote, this is a database of uh, quotes uh, and uh, the tags, which is an array of uh, strings. And uh, this uh, this seems like a pretty straightforward thing to have, but it, it also it is also very uh, critical to have when you are writing queries inside your code uh, or uh, you are trying to figure out what fields you can query on. And more importantly, you can also see the indexes. Right now, there, there are no indexes, but uh, uh, for the performance of your queries, it is important that uh, you make sure that your queries are covered by an index. And this is a great way to have visibility over what indexes exist, what indexes are missing. And uh, this is again, born from something we heard from users. Users saying, I built a feature, I built a, a new endpoint for my microservice. I deployed to production and I forgot to, to create the index and then everything mm -hmm. is low and I don't understand why. And so having this type of visibility yeah. was a way to uh, prevent this, uh, um, later uh, performance problem. Uh, now, once we have a visibility over schema and over indexes, it is really easy to use the extension to try out queries. And I actually have a file here where I have a number of queries that uh, are built for this uh, quotes collection. Uh, this is, uh, um, for example, an aggregation, a very simple one. It just samples one document from the collection. Mm -hmm. And I can just take this query. I can uh, say, run this block. And this will just make the sample on the collection. And it shows me the result in the editor. Again, here, I have not left my ID. I'm still writing code in the same way I write my application code. And I can validate that the query I'm trying to build is uh, the right one. Right. And uh, uh, now that I'm satisfied with it, I am not really a Java developer. I have not been a Java developer in a long time, mm -hmm. but I could even say, okay, now give me this aggregation. And uh, uh, let's see, go here, give it to me in Java. So mm -hmm. if I were to build a Java microservice, then I could just copy paste this inside my code. That's amazing. Uh, and, and then, what this reminds me of is actually the collaboration aspect of this. So we built this functionality because we thought it would be useful uh, as a way to quickly iterate on queries and aggregations uh, uh, all inside your IDE. But then as we rolled it out, we started seeing that uh, customers were storing these files together with their application code, together with their microservice uh, mm -hmm. repository uh, as a way to list all the queries that uh, that particular application was running and collaborate with their teammates on these queries. So they would use this file as a, the source of truth for everything that the application uh -huh. is doing against the database and uh, use this uh, export to language functionality to then keep the code up to date. And we thought it was really cool and really powerful. And if you think about it, it makes sense because then mm -hmm. you have just one place where everything about your data layer is uh, summarized. And even if you're not a skilled mm -hmm. developer with that particular programming language, you can still work with the code base and you can uh, generate the corresponding MongoDB code. Gotcha. That's, that's awesome. Okay, let's, let's take a, a step back. 
I mean, that's that's amazing stuff. But I think we we got maybe a little ahead of a couple of people that are watching. So what's the name of the extension? This is the MongaDB for VS Code extension. And then um, where can I get the session later? The session is going to be immediately available on the MongoDB YouTube channel right after the session is over. And then there's another question here um, from, can you connect uh, and deploy access to a database? Yes, uh, that was the wrong one. This one, can we directly connect to a database through the extension? So that that was probably the first thing that you did maybe even before. Yes. Like, initially, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you're right. I prepared for the demo and uh, <laughs> you're already I, connected. <laughs> I was already connected. Yes. Uh, let me actually show you how it works. Let me pull yeah. out a connection streak from somewhere else. Uh, let's see. It's pretty simple, right? It is. It is very simple. Uh, and so you can connect to an Atlas database. You can even connect to a local or self-hosted MongoDB <laughs> database as well. Yeah, that, that is correct. So we are not uh, constraining uh, where you are connecting to, uh, you just go to the to Mongo to sorry to VS Code. You open your command palette. You say connect. Uh, uh, connection string is always the easiest method to connect to a cluster with MongoDB because all the information is stored in the connection string. You paste the connection string here. You enter, and uh, there you go. We are mm -hmm. connected to the other cluster now. Nice. And if I were to run this this query uh, again, then it would run against the cluster I'm connected to. So this is probably not going to work because I assume that the uh, quotes collection and quotes DB are not present present in this uh, in that cluster. collection. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And then just going back to like the very beginning when you generated that collection, um, mm -hmm. there's a little confusion uh, from one one of our viewers, and 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 you really went through that quickly in that zip file and it created the collection and it loaded yeah. all that data like that. That was that was the most impressive part to me, honestly, because you just you you loaded all of that, all of that seed data. Can you just like go through that one more time, just like? Yes, let me do that. Uh, and and sorry for skipping through it. I was kind oh, no, of no, no. Uh, oh, no. gonna go through the playgrounds later, but yeah, yeah. Um, so in the extension, we have this concept of playgrounds, uh, and uh, playgrounds are JavaScript environments where you write uh, uh, MongoDB code in shell format. So basically, JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And uh, they allow you to do operations against uh, the cluster you are connected to through the extension. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most simple operations are obviously the queries that I showed earlier. But another way of using Playgrounds is to seed your cluster, your development cluster, with the data that you need. Mm -hmm. And the data I needed in this case was a, a zip file that was stored in my repository. And so what this uh, uh, seed MongoDB playground is doing is, is, um, for, is using the database quotes DB, the collection called quotes, and then it's building the path to that uh, uh, quotes zip file in the file system, and also the path to the destination join, the JSON file in the file system. Mm -hmm. And then it's calling child process, and this is the Node.js child process because uh, a playground is nothing more than a Node.js environment. There is actually the MongoDB shell embedded uh, behind it uh, as a runtime. And so we can use any uh, Node.js native module. And I am executing the unzip command on this system. This is a Linux system um, using a Docker container for development. And uh, um, it extracts the archive into the data directory. And so the resulting file is actually this quote safe as this file, which is pretty big. And so VS Code is not going to open it. Mm -hmm. uh, and now if I go back to my, uh, where was my playground? Uh, there you go. So uh, then uh, it deletes everything that was in my original collection, if anything. So I can always start with a clean data set. Mm -hmm. uh, it parses the content of uh, quotes.json. So it's easy, it's ready to be inserted into MongoDB. Uh, and then it just prints out a log, a log message, which will show up here at the bottom. I think it's gone now because I, I run other playgrounds. And then uh, it just calls uh, get sibling DB to get uh, the quotes database, uh, get collection to go into quotes. And then it doesn't insert many. This is basically, this quotes is going to be a big array of quotes mm -hmm. that end up 
in uh, in the destination collection, which is this one that you have over here. Nice, nice. So, just to recap, so you you're in VS Code. You, you've never touched MongoDB Atlas or anything like that. You've connected to your database, and you're you're seeding. You're you're writing data to the database. You're reading the data data from the database. Again, all from VS Code. This is what is going to make uh, the developer's experience so much nicer and more productive is you could just do everything right here. Yeah, and and, and and think about it this way. Like you join my team today and uh, you checked out the repository for the first time and you need some place where to start. Mm -hmm. So you connect to uh, a development database, no matter if you have it on your, your computer or if it is Atlas, uh, uh, you connect and then you say, okay, now where's my data? I need something to develop on. And uh, someone tells you, well, just go to seed mongodb.js, click play, and you have your data inside your destination cluster. Nice, nice. That's amazing. And, and the fact that you can use just any uh, NPM module, you know, this is Node.js right here. So you can use any NPM um, module as well and manipulate the data however you need. And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, was there, um, so I was going to ask you about security. It is now mm -hmm. is now a good time to like move on to um, the next topic. So like, what? Um, yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Um, like, what security measures are in place in in this? Because you're reading and writing data to mm -hmm. to your database. You know, what kind of security is there between the you know VS Code extension and and the database itself? Right, so I think there's uh, there's actually two aspects of security. One is uh, where the credentials are stored because my connection string or uh, the information I put in uh, uh, a connection form, uh, if I use this method of connecting so I can uh, actually open a form if I have advanced connection options. Mm -hmm. So you put sensitive data here. You have your database uh, username, your database password, and you don't want those to leak to anybody. So for those, we we store them in the uh, operating system's keychain, and VS Code actually has the APIs to do that when you build an extension. And so those are secured, and nobody can get to them. Nice. Uh, then there is the connection between uh, the extension and uh, the cluster, as you said. Uh, that is uh, uh, done through the Node.js driver. So it would be the same type of security that uh, your application uses. So it uses TLS, everything is encrypted, and uh, there's no uh, chance that your uh, connection information or the data that flows through the connection is leaked anywhere outside the, uh, the extension. Nice. That, that's, that's good to know for, for developers who may have you know, sensitive data. Uh, it, it's, it's all secure, or it can be secured with the proper setup. Um, so the, um, the, the uh, other thing that was, I was looking at was, um, I wasn't sure in your demo if you had like more to go off of that, or if we, if we wanted to move on and talking about other features of the extension. Actually, I, I did want to demo something else because sure. and you touched upon it uh, a bit. Uh, so this playground here was using child process, which is a, a built-in Node.js module, but you can actually use any module from uh, NPM. Uh, yeah. You just need to take a look at our documentation to see where you need to install those modules on your system. But uh, that opens up a lot of possibilities. And uh, uh, just to give you an example, actually, uh, I have, have two, but let me start with one. Uh, there are ways where, or there are situations where you don't have a data set to start with and you want to generate a lot of uh, uh, fake data or synthetic data. And that is really easy to do. Uh, let me actually create a new playground to start with. And uh, uh, I'm doing this uh, just uh, by heart. I don't necessarily remember all the syntax, so this could be uh, definitely wrong, but uh, uh, I can uh, use the faker module that if you are a JavaScript developer, you're probably familiar with. Mm -hmm. And I am going to require it. Um, and I think it's faker.js slash uh, faker. And now um, I will uh, create, actually, let me. I, I will cheat and copy paste part of this. So I am creating a function that creates a random user. 
And uh, this is your typical user, user ID, username, email, avatar, password, birthday, to register that. Um, mm -hmm. If you are working with uh, pretty much any application, you'll have a collection of users that uh, uh, can get access to your system. And now let's insert those users uh, inside uh, a database and collection. So let's call it uh, awesome DB. Uh, and then uh, we do the db dot uh, get collection and you see that you get uh, auto complete here mm -hmm. uh, users uh, and then uh, we're gonna do insert many and i seem to remember that faker has some sort of uh, helper uh, maybe oh, something like that uh, create random user and we create uh, 100. So if I did everything right, mm -hmm. now uh, why does it not like that? Oh, yeah. There you, go. you need that more room to close your sidebar. Speak, speaking of uh, semicolons, yeah. Um, now well, I don't need to save it, but if I run this, this will take uh, a few seconds. It will essentially use the Faker module to generate uh, a user, users, a lot of them. Uh -huh. and, uh, and now you see that uh, the result is what you'd have in the shell if you were to insert mm -hmm. an array of documents. So uh, a list of IDs that were inserted into MongoDB. And now right. if I go here and I again check my cluster and again, a playground always executes against the cluster you're connected to. I have mm -hmm. my awesome DB, which was not here before. Mm -hmm. I have my users collections, and uh, this is what a user looks like: uh, uh, avatar, birthday, email, password, that, user ID, username, and then the underscore ID, which is always filled in by the driver if you don't specify one. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I can also open a random user, and you see what a document uh, looks like. Yeah. Well, go back to the schema because I think this is important. Um, yeah. So most people don't associate schemas with a document database. Um, and that's because, well, MongoDB has a flexible schema and you can set up a schema. This schema specifically is inferred from the documents that are in the collection. Um, and it, you know, if you wanted to set up a strict schema, you could do that at the database level. But in here, it's taking a look at a, a section of your documents and it's, it's you know, inferring what that schema would be and like you touched on before it's so helpful when you're writing your queries to see okay what is actually in these documents what what fields can i reference and, and use exactly yes so as you said the uh, mongodb the schema is flexible is flexible as many of you know uh, but uh, there are still fields i need to query on and mm -hmm. uh, the extension helps you by sampling the collection taking a number of documents uh, extracting uh, the actual fields from those documents and summarizing them into this pretty schema view in the sidebar. Mm -hmm. And you can even see like what the field might be, whether it's a string or a number or date, whatever it might be with the yeah, exactly. icons there. It's, it's and, very helpful, very helpful. Yeah, and not only that, like if now I, I go back, I clear my playground and I say like use, uh, uh, now it should have my, uh, it's probably not regenerated. Let me refresh things. Uh, I think it regenerates the list of uh, databases and collections when you connect. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I do, let's see, yeah, there awesome DB, and then I do DB dot uh, uh, get collection, it probably auto completes users. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then I can do uh, find uh, to do a query and uh, I can say, uh, well, again, let's refer to the schema. Mm -hmm. I can say um, email, and it actually knows about the presence of this field. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am going to pretend I dot com. And if I run this now, probably mm -hmm. there will be some, yeah, there will be some users that have a Gmail email address. And this mm -hmm. is, like you see how fast it was to write yeah. that query because yeah. the extension is aware of the collection, the database the schema, and uh, mm -hmm. it can help you how to complete fields uh, and uh, uh, even operators. So let's see if there is any. Yeah, and I uh, love the the IntelliSense whenever you're like, for instance, you know, find 
or find one or whatever you're, you're typing and then it gives you the extra information it even has a link to the mongodb documentation if yeah. you wanted to even learn more exactly so we, we always try to build uh, uh documentation into the experience so if you know what you're doing then you know what you're doing but if you want to know more then you can always transition to the online documentation and uh, explore more advanced use cases yeah i have a question here uh fernando is asking is it uh, take the entire collection to infer the schema or only a few it takes a subset of your collection um i'm it not does. sure exactly how many but it takes a subset um that's a good question i don't remember exactly how many we use for vs code but uh, uh we use the i think we use the dollar sample uh, uh, mm -hmm. aggregation stage so it should give you a, a pretty solid sample of the documents in our collection gotcha here's, here's another question i don't know if if we should ask or not but <laughs> Is this going to be available in uh, JetBrains IDEs? That's, that's a good question, actually. So um, for JetBrains IDEs, uh, there is uh, a MongoDB experience that is built uh, directly by JetBrains. I don't know if this uh, question is referring specifically to the community version of the JetBrains IDEs or uh, in general. So if you have a commercial license for JetBrains IDEs, then there will be a MongoDB uh, plugin in there. I think they, the Overall experience is called the uh, uh, database tool, and you can connect to different databases, including MongoDB. And uh, what's under the hood is actually the same runtime that we use uh, inside VS Code. It's the MongoDB shell uh, that uh, uh, the JetBrains team worked on with us uh, yeah. to put inside our IDs. Nice. Well, maybe we can touch on that real quick, too, is the extension also gives you the, the ability to use the MongoDB shell directly in VS Code. I don't know if you had that part of your demo, but we can at least show that you know you can you can actually yeah. bring up the shell right here in, in VS Code. I if I if I remember to install it in the container I'm using, then yes. There you go. Nice. There you go. Yes. So I can do my your usual interactive commands, uh, show dbs, uh, uh, use uh, code dbs, uh, and db dot codes dot find. There you go. Nice. So, so yes, I mean, all of the tools that you need to, to use MongoDB right here inside VS Code. You don't have to go anywhere. Exactly. And again, like keep in mind that we are not trying to rebuild uh, an advanced uh, data IDE like mm -hmm. Compass could be inside VS Code because like that's not the point. When yeah. you are in VS Code, you are writing code. Yeah. You are not looking for advanced data exploration, data management capabilities. Mm -hmm. For that, we have Compass, and uh, we believe that's the type of experience uh, uh, users to, should use. But when your focus is writing code, then uh, you are in VS Code, and uh, we give you the essential, tool, essential tools to work with MongoDB. And if you feel that there are other essential tools that are not there, feel free to let us know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's talk about that, actually. What uh, what are, are, are there plans for the future of this extension? And also, what is this? What happened today? Right. Uh, that's that's a very good question. Why are we here today? Well, we are here today because uh, it's uh, it's nice to share with uh, uh, our community what uh, we think is cool of our VS Code extension. But also because today is the day when we announced uh, that the extension is in general availability. And so to give a bit more context, uh, we released the extension for the first time, I think about three years ago, and uh, we labeled it as preview. And uh, the reason for that was that uh, we, we wanted people to use it. We wanted to give people tools to be more productive with MongoDB, but we also wanted to get feedback from the community. And uh, over the past three years, we got a lot of feedback. We got a lot of uh, positive engagement. We got some, uh, pull requests, uh, uh, we got people asking for things that we had not thought of. And so over time, we improved the extension. And today we are uh, at the point where we can say, okay, this is general availability, use it, um, trust that uh, we will keep developing it, we will keep improving it. Uh, uh, we will take everybody's feedback very seriously and we are committed to improving the extension further. So, so far, uh, up until I think this morning, we had about 860,000 downloads. We have about 10, 15,000 downloads or installs uh, on any given day. And uh, we have a pretty good uh, star rating on the marketplace of so 4.5 stars. And so 
install it, use it, uh, trust that uh, it works. It should work pretty, very well. If it doesn't, open a bug, we'll fix it, uh, uh, we'll support you. We are always uh, looking for um, opportunities to improve it and also to extend uh, the feature set to uh, help you all be more, more productive when inside your ID you're working with MongoDB. I submitted a feature request, by the way, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Yeah, and and I think uh, like before you asked uh, what what is it today, you also asked like what are we doing next with yeah, this yeah. extension? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. today, like the fact that we're saying okay, now this is GA doesn't mean that it's the end of a journey. This is a stepping stone and not a final state. So in the most recent release, uh, we've included uh, significant improvements in autocomplete inside playgrounds, for example. So the uh, field autocomplete that you saw earlier. It's something that we added recently based on uh, your feedback, based on the community's feedback. Uh, but we know that we can improve it even more. We can enhance uh, autocomplete to be smarter. Uh, when you are inside an aggregation stage, it will be able to know what operators can and cannot use depending on the stage. Um, we also think that uh, we can probably build something that not only works in playgrounds, but also interact with, with, your, with your code. So if you're writing, Node.js, if you're writing like Rust or Golang, languages that you typically develop with in VS Code, then we can probably save you time. Um, and that's something that we'll be looking at doing uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, also, and that kind of relates to the feature that uh, Jesse, you submitted, uh, we see a lot of uh, Atlas customers who are successfully using VS Code to work with their, with their data. And uh, we'll definitely be looking at making Atlas more of first-class citizen inside VS Code. Uh, that could mean a lot of things. It could mean that uh, if you log in with Atlas, then uh, you don't need to copy and paste connection strings back and forth. We could connect directly to the clusters you have access to. Uh, it could mean like just this feature that uh, um, it's easier to develop uh, app services, uh, functions, uh, and triggers uh, uh, from the VS Code extension. Uh, and then, uh, um, I would be lie if I'd say if I'd say that uh, uh, we are not thinking about how the recent developments in generative AI can help uh, you be more productive inside VS Code. So, a big topic uh, is uh, helping uh, developers, and this is not strictly related to AI. We've been trying to do that uh, uh, in VS Code and in other tools for years. Like we want aggregations and queries to be easier and faster to write. And we think that uh, uh, generative AI capabilities can uh, hopefully get us there. So this is not something that uh, uh, we have a definitive uh, like project to go on like next week, but it is definitely uh, an area that we are exploring that we want to um, eventually bring uh, um, into your VS Code experience. In the works, awesome. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be amazing to just, uh write a comment saying in in plain you know english <laughs> what you want it to do and it just writes it for you that, that'd be pretty cool yeah and uh we, we've seen uh like successful ai products like github copilot uh, mm -hmm. uh, be a very like enhancing what the developer can do and making mm -hmm. developers faster and so i think that's uh, that's a good uh, um, type of experience that one can build inside uh, uh, a place like vs code yeah. So talking about, you know, new things, features and, and whatnot, where, where can, or how can the community help in that regard? Where can they go to submit PRs or, or feature requests, et cetera? Mm -hmm. So I think the easiest way is definitely suggesting ideas at feedback.mongodb.com. Uh, that is our unified feedback portal. We triage uh, those requests uh, almost on a daily basis. And uh, we also give feedback to the people who submitted them uh, on uh, whether we think it's a good uh, uh, direction for the product or not. We also engage with uh, the users who submit requests. We typically interview them. We have a chat. We figure out exactly uh, what the pain point that we're trying to solve was. So feedback mongodb.com is the primary place to give us feedback. Uh, nice. But uh, in the context of VS Code, we've seen a few users who sent us pull requests on, on GitHub. And uh, the team is on GitHub every day because that's what they use to develop. And so we do look at uh, issues and pull requests. And uh, um, it's something that we definitely welcome. Um, so what's, what's the link there? Is it GitHub MongoDB slash? Uh, the 
uh, do you want me to write it in the chat? Yeah. Uh, that way we that. can get everyone the link to the GitHub. Uh, wait, can I not write in the chat? Uh, maybe in the private chat, and then I'll paste it. OK, so it should be github.com slash mongodb js es code. There. Nice. All right, I'll put that up on the screen as well. And awesome. OK, so let's um, let's see. What is next on the list? Yeah, let's talk about some best practices. So if someone is just getting started with this extension, like what's the easiest way to get up and running? Right, so from your VS Code, uh, first of all, you install the extension. It's called MongoDB for VS Code. You find it here. Uh, there is uh, uh, also uh, an, in the Marketplace page, there's a nice getting started video. So I would uh, definitely encourage you to take a look at that uh, because it will give you some pointers to get started. Um, then uh, once you have the extension, grab a connection string, whether it is from your local host uh, or a free cluster in Atlas. I recommend free cluster in Atlas also because it's easier to get some sample data to get going and uh, uh, to use for exploration. Uh, so you connect to your cluster with uh, a connection string uh, and uh, um, once you are connected, you've seen how easy it is to work with playgrounds. So I would say do your command palette, command shift P, create MongoDB playground, and you already have a sample playground to uh, work with. So this simply creates a database. It inserts a bunch of uh, sales records into a collection, and then it does a find uh, and uh, it does an aggregate. And that's a great way to start poking around that uh, queries, aggregations, uh, how to complete, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Nice. And uh, um, and then uh, what else? Let's see. Uh, we, As I said earlier, we've seen customers successfully use Playgrounds files to store uh, all the queries that their applications run. So I would encourage you to not just run a playground, but once you have a playground that uh, you think you'll be what you'll want to reuse in the future, just uh, hit Command S or Control S if you are on Windows, just save it, uh, and uh, you have it there in your file system uh, to uh, to be reused. Yeah, it's just a file. Just you can save it and reuse it and share it. Yeah, yeah. And, and now that I'm uh, uh, actually saving it and I see that uh, there are some errors here, I think it's worth mentioning that as well. So um, from uh, the this version, the, this GA version, uh, the playgrounds also integrate with the rest of the JavaScript tools that you typically use, whether it's uh, ESLint uh, or I'm currently using uh, a semi-standard that like semicolons, I like standard format. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want. So uh, it's giving me linting errors. Uh, uh, the quotes on price are necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. So we could actually uh, tweak this template if we wanted, but uh, basically I could get rid of all these errors just by uh, deleting them. So you, if you have a code style, you can make sure that uh, um, it is followed also inside MongoDB Playground in the same way that uh, all the other JavaScript and Node.js files follow them. Cool. Yeah. So if you had a, something set up and you just did like an auto format, it could just remove all of those for you, possibly if you're using prettier or something like that. Yeah. Oh, there okay. you go. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Now, now it's all fixed. Now, now yeah. your your VS Code is happy. That's awesome. Exactly. Um, there is a little shout out here from uh, Mike Lynn, our uh, podcast professional. Uh, there is a conversation with uh, Shelby Carpenter, senior product marketing manager. Uh, just go to mongodb.com slash podcast to hear more about this extension. Amazing. Awesome. Well, let's see. There was one other, one last thing. We kind of touched on this, um, and that's kind of like what, what sets this extension apart from other um, IDE integrations available in the marketplace. Um, we know that it's separate from Compass and other things, but like what separates it from others? Right, so I think, uh, well, first of all, this is built by us. So we 
keep listening to our customers, we keep listening to our community, and uh, we try to build uh, what solves uh, our customers' problems. Um, and uh, we keep maintaining it, uh, we support it. Uh, uh, if you are a commercial customer, our support team will support you. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that uh, um, the fact that this is specific for MongoDB and it doesn't uh, try to do multiple databases uh, uh, really lets us focus on the MongoDB experience. And uh, um, the other thing that I think uh, is nice about this, uh, and uh, maybe this is a peculiarity of uh, extensions for VS Code versus extension for other IDEs or experiences that lives outside the IDE is that uh, uh, it integrates very well with the uh, popular cloud IDEs like Gitpod or GitHub Code Spaces. So uh, in fact, in, in this demo that uh, I ran for you, I was run, running, as you see here at the bottom left, uh, dev container. Mm -hmm. So this is the same technology that GitHub Code Spaces uses in their infrastructure. So if you have a, a definition for your cloud ID, a definition file for your cloud ID mm -hmm. in your repository, then you will find MongoDB for VS Code also in your GitHub code spaces or in your Gitpod environment, uh, which means that inside your browser or inside your like, containerized uh, cloud ID, mm -hmm. you can still work with MongoDB without looking for other tools, without running anything on your computer. So your development environment is always 100% reproducible for your entire team. Nice. Yeah, I had a, a banner up over the bottom left corner of your uh, VS Code, so I just took oh, it yeah. down, and so yeah, we can yeah. see that he's he's actually in a dev container this entire yeah. time. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, let's see. So there, one other thing that you kind of touched on before, but we didn't really go into much detail is under the schemas, the indexes. There was you didn't have any indexes, but you can actually create an index yeah. from the extension, and maybe you can just show like that template that pops up. We don't you don't have to actually create one, but like how yeah, easy it is to create one, yeah. I can do indexes, I do class. It's actually, let's, let's create one, come on. <laughs> uh, it's uh, So there's different types. You got like your normal index, wildcard, text index, geospatial, yeah. hashed, uh, so, call, there's, there's so many different ones. Yeah, here we try to use comments to explain all the possibilities to you. But uh, uh, I can also go up here and say, I am going to query my users by email address very often. So I'll create uh, an index on uh, email. And now if I run this, and again, we use Playground for everything because uh, that's the easiest uh, and uh, easiest to configure way inside an ID to tweak your indexes, to tweak your collection properties and so on and so forth. So now if I run this, the index will be created. Uh, index creation commands typically return the name of the index. And so if now I refresh this again, I'm going to just open here, you see mm -hmm. that the email index is being created. And it's an index on the email field. So it nice. tells you even uh, what field the index is on and whether it's ascending or descending. Nice. So now you have a performance query when you're querying your email field. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Well, we are right around time. I think we covered everything. Was there anything that we left out, Max, that you can think of? Um, I don't think so. Um, so we covered playgrounds. We covered using uh, NPM models in playgrounds. Uh, uh, we covered queries and aggregations. Uh, I think that's pretty much uh, everything that there is to cover. But uh, um, yeah, check out the demo video that is linked by the Marketplace. Uh, and uh, definitely reach out to us uh, via the feedback portal or the community forums uh, if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, any type of feedback. Always happy to hear you out. Perfect. And if you haven't installed the extension yet, please go install it. Help us to get to that 1 million downloads. That's what we're looking forward to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. We're getting close. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Max, for coming on and, and giving us a demo of the amazing VS Code extension that you created or that you helped create. And uh, if anyone has any questions, one more banner here, any more questions, go to our community forums, community.mongodb.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jesse, for hosting me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.